Yeah, g'day, it's uh, it's Charlie again. Just been away for a week or so. Um, <clears throat> so I just got back uh, yesterday. So um, thought of a quick update on some ongoing sort of experiments with this uh, this little tramping rig. So um, what I'll do is I'll just a, a recap on the um, the current configuration, and then we can talk about some of the circuits there. So at the moment, um, sort of just sticking with the the two. Any 612s. Um, try to keep it quite simple. Um, so at the moment, uh, RF is coming in through um, this line here. So if you look, the, these 612s have got two inputs and two outputs. So pins one and pin two are inputs, and pin four and pin five are outputs. So um, at the moment, uh, and we'll look at the amps in sync. RF is coming in through pin 1 of this one and is going out pin 5 through the crystal filter to the second mixer. Now this is obviously on receive. Um, these two uh, switches here are, are relays which has been uh, switched from um, the PTT switch. Um, these devices here according to the spec sheet for both inputs and outputs uh, a 1,500 ohms, um, and my crystal filter here I'm using out of an old uh, Yaesu rig. Um, I understand it's around 500 ohms. So we've got a 19 to 1 um, transformer here or an FT37-43 uh, to give us that impedance match. Interesting enough, it's both the inputs and the outputs are at 1,500 ohms. The output of that crystal filter um, is going through another impedance matching transformer. In this case, through here to uh, input number two um, of the second 612. That's being mixed from uh, the SI5351. So we just very quickly talk about this one. So the SI5351 has got two clock outputs. Um, the first one we're using is a VFO, uh, and that's going through a 10K trim pot. And uh, the idea of the trim pot there is to, as per the spec sheet, to keep the oscillator drive within 200 to 300 millivolts peak to peak. So I've currently got that set on a happy medium of 250 millivolts peak to peak through a 100 nanofarad uh, coupling capacitor. So on the second mixer over here, we've got the beat frequency oscillator, exactly the same setup, 10K trim pot, same values of uh, 250 millivolts peak to peak, 100 nanofarad coupling capacitor into the oscillator uh, port uh, which is pin 6 um, of the second 612. The output of that um, I'm taking through uh, pin 5 which is one of the outputs through to the audio frequency amp which we'll have a look in a sec. On transmit uh, the microphone amplifier uh, enlivens up, the AF amplifier has its VCC removed and audio now comes in through pin 1 uh, and the coupling capacitor for that is sitting on the mic amp. Uh, again, mixed now with the BFO. Um, uh, yeah, sorry, yeah. Um, up converted to the IF uh, through another 100 nanofold capacitor, and it's coming out of uh, pin 4 in this particular case. On transmit, the relays toggle across. So the output of this one now through the crystal filter back down this side here and in through input number two. That's mixed with um, the SI5351 and stepped up to our desired transmit frequency and coming out of pin five here off to our transmit amp. Um, contrary to what I said in the previous video, uh, I'm running these two 612s through a 6.8 microhenry inductor. Uh, at 7 volts. At 7 volts, according to the spec sheet, and it's, it's actually 17 dB gain, uh, not 13, which I uh, had said in the previous email, uh, say gain video. So as you can see here, with this configuration, because of that internal gain, and the gain we're getting through both our receive amp and our AF amp, um, we don't have a need, at the, rate, the way this radio is working, to have separate IF amplifiers sitting here. Um, which is actually quite good in terms of overall parts count. A very, uh, a very simple um, radio indeed. Um, for interest sake, the microphone amplifier here, 
uh, just using a uh, 2N3904. Um, it's, it's a circuit I've been using for quite a while now, and it, uh, yeah, it's quite well. It's a Class A amplifier um, with a bit of audio frequency filtering in the, the, uh, on the output here, just to uh, give it some of that more 200 to um, you know, roughly sort of 4K um, frequency pass. Uh, and that coupling capacitor there, that 10 microfarad capacitor, leads through down here to that input of that, uh, of that mixer. The, uh, the two amplifiers here, which we'll look at, so that was the, um, both the receive, both the receive uh, amplifier here and the, the preamp uh, before going to the JBOT. That's just running a, uh, a CASCO J310 arrangement here, so it's set up as a, um, a pseudo uh, dual gate MOSFET. Um, so, yeah, extremely simple. Um, input comes through here on gate one through a, um, a gate capacitor, a gate resistor here, sorry, of uh, 2200, uh, and the output through um, the drain of that second J310 through again just a simple 100 nanofarad uh, capacitor. Um, the coupling impedance matching uh, transformers uh, are shown are not on the circuit; they're they're elsewhere. Uh, and in the gate two of the second J310. Has got the biasing for its gain, so um, I'm just running a, uh, a 20k pot hanging off the 12 volts, um, and and just basically trimming that to get the overall or set the overall gain of that stage. Um, other than that, uh, just a 100 ohm resistor there in series with the uh, the 12 volts coming in, and a couple of decoupling capacitors um, over there. So in terms of the configuration, um, so on receive. We've got our RF coming in through from the antenna. Um, that's going through to this uh, double pole, double throw switch here, which I'm just using as a simple, um, a simple uh, transmit receive switch. Um, and uh, on receive, obviously uh, in the up position, and then that RF now comes through a um, 20 meter bandpass filter and straight into our receive amplifier. There goes the two J310s you can see there, uh, set up in that sort of pseudo uh, dual gate MOSFET. Um, impedance matching there, so we've got three turns on the primary and 20 turns on the secondary. That's an FT37-43. Um, and just to double check, the rule of thumb is you want to have the in, uh, inductive reactance for any one of those cores. Uh, or, or, the, or the primary or the secondary to be at least four times the load impedance. So in this particular case, FT37-43 at 14 megahertz, three turns is giving me roughly 3.15 microhenries, which gives me uh, an inductive reactance of about 220 ohms, which is just slightly more than four times 50. So um, I'm about right there. Um, the output of that stage through another uh, impedance matching there, so impedance matching 2200 to 1500, um, and then into that input one as we saw on that NE612. Uh, you can see there the two, just slightly hidden there, the two trim pots, uh, which are taking the output of the SI5351 and just trimming it. Um, through that coupling capacitor there to give us that 250 millivolts uh, peak to peak drive for the two uh, for the two um, for the two mixers. The two relays there, um, just using the same color coding as Pete Giuliano uh, N6QW, so orange for receive and yellow for transmit. So that's the normally closed and the normally open. Normally closed, normally open. So on receive, everything is relaxed. Uh, for battery drain, we want to minimize that. Uh, through our impedance cup, impedance matching transformer through the filter and back out the other side. Back down to the second input of this one. Again, as we saw the um, the schematic, uh, mixed with the BFO to output through pin 5 um, our audio. So through that one microfarad coupling capacitor through the grey audio cable into our um, AF power amp. Uh, 
and this is just an, an old circuit which um, you'll see on the internet um, many times. Uh, it's just a stock standard LM386. Um, so the power amp with a pre-driver with a, a, a 3904 pre-driver there. With a little bit of um, audio filtering here um, and a bit of hiss reduction there. So um, I'll probably look at redesign this at some stage. But it's just a, a simple sort of circuit to, uh, to basically do some testing. Um, so on our transmit side, um, our microphone amp, so again our microphone in through the um, single stage 3904 um, audio amplifier as we saw uh, the circuit diagram before. Um, a little bit of audio coupling there with uh, that 47 nanofarad capacitor and the resistor. Um, and then through the coupling capacitor. Got the level level shifting here, so we can just sort of um, set the overall uh, level of the um, microphone drive, feeding through uh, that coupling capacitor into the input or one of the inputs of um, of this mixer here. So that's very sort of simply the um, the circuitry on the transmit side. Now the two relays have uh, toggled across, so right through the yellow, through there, through the second mixer, stepped up to our desired. Uh, transmit frequency and into our pre-driver. Pre-driver is exactly the same circuit as our as our receiver amplifier with a, um, a dual J310 um, arrangement. Uh, the only difference is the um, impedance matching transformers uh, are back to front. So here we were stepping from 1500 ohms to 2200 um, and now we're going from 2200 down to 50 ohms. The output of that through here to our, our parent fire strip. Um, this is just a, um, a, a J bot that I've been using you know, several times in, in tramping radios. Uh, the, the, the main transistors in this one here um, are BD139s. So we've got two of those um, in a push pull parallel arrangement. So these two are paralleled up, and these two are paralleled up, and just using sort of some old. Um, copper board here to act as the heatsink, and the output of that is going through just at the moment just a junk box low pass filter, uh, which I'll, I'll redesign properly. But at the moment, this is just for purely testing purposes. Uh, and back through, so it's now the transmit audio to the top side of the switch. So on transmit, that then disappears out the antenna, and off we go. So a, a very simple single stage super heat receiver using these um, 612s. Um, certainly quite impressive, really, in terms of the additional gain you get with these. Um, the only downside and thing I've now had to add in a, um, you can't quite see it on the picture here, but there's a, oh, let me just pull it down, there's a, uh, a uh, LM3, uh, LM317 um, voltage regulator there, which I had to use just to, to generate that um, 7 volt line here to power um, the two. 612. So, you know, uh, sure, I've reduced the parts count by um, a couple of amps, but I've had to add that one in, but that's not a major. So, anyway, that's just a quick rundown. Um, I'll pause here and um, I'll splice in some tests uh, tonight uh, once the sun's gone down, then we'll start to get a few, um, a few signals coming on and see if we can't make a contact. But at the moment, um, it's looking quite good, and I might actually get the old oscilloscope up too, and we can look at some of the. Um, there, the right there. So that's probably enough for now. So um, I'll break and um, we'll uh, come back later on.